Rarely has there been an election like the one in New South Wales at the moment, where the chickens coming home to roost and the nightmare stumbles of the Yemma Labor government seem matched only by the sheer ineptitude of the opposition. With just over a week to go and after a year of embarrassing transport disasters, a simple mechanical failure on Sydney's train system brought the city to its knees last night. There were more than 4,000 commuters trapped on packed trains for three hours with city traffic at a standstill. It should have been the last straw for exasperated and long-suffering voters and may yet be. But unfortunately, only the day before, Liberal leader Peter Debnam had dismissed public transport as not the number one issue. And earlier in the week, it had been revealed that Mr Debnam's image was to be strangely absent from Liberal how-to-vote cards. Deborah Cornwall reports. Am I upset? Oh look dude, they're a $300 pair of shoe and I've broken them on the, on the track. Absolutely pissed off. It's terrible, I mean, we were on the, on the, on the train for about two and a half hours. I certainly apologise not only to those customers, but to all customers in the network. For the thousands of Sydney siders caught out in last night's meltdown, no amount of public grovelling today was ever going to be enough. Normally it takes an hour, last night it took five hours. So it's, uh, it was a long journey. It was just getting very distressing for some people. Um, I think the confinement and the capture, you know, you, you, you're stuck, you cannot get out and it's a horrible feeling. Public commuters are a long suffering crowd. They queue up, they stand on wet platforms, sit, stand in hot carriages, unair conditioned, and they've taken a lot after many years. But I think that what we're really seeing is now is the development of an anger deep inside the political life of this city. The Yemma government went straight into damage control. The Transport Minister issuing no less than seven abject <laughs> apologies at this morning's press conference. Firstly, I sincerely apologise for any delays that were caused last night to commuters on our rail system. What happened last night was a very unusual and very serious incident at a, a very difficult location, probably the worst part of the network at the worst time. The buck stops with the government and uh, you know, last night is just is, is, is further indication of, of what I said on, on the first day that I became the Premier that I made this our number one priority, it remains our number one priority, and it will continue to be our number one priority if we are given another chance by the electorate. But there was more than a whiff of Groundhog Day to this latest traffic snafu. Well, it's another day, it's another breakdown, another minister apologising, another minister calling for a review. No, I bet you can't. Just three weeks ago, the city was brought to a standstill overwhelmed by crowds visiting the Queen Mary II and her sister ship. Two days later, the city came to a grinding halt once again. The security forces made way for the visiting United States Vice President, Dick Cheney. The state Labor government's dismal track record in getting its ageing public transport system to function properly has caused major heartache for Sydney siders over the past two years. Train breakdowns, ferry delays and overcrowded buses leaving commuters repeatedly stranded. Sydney is an international city and a global city and it has pretenses to be having a transport system that's equivalent to that status, but it doesn't have it. it our public transport system, through underfunding, is crap. This latest embarrassment for the Yemma government should have been a gift for the opposition, but earlier this week, Liberal leader Peter Debnam cancelled his launch for a public transport policy claiming it was not a number one priority for voters. Today he was forced to re-scramble the message. If you want to ask people in New South Wales what the number one issue is, it's water or health, depending on week by week. Public transport remains a key concern. They're both sides, I think, in politics in New South Wales are afraid of public transport by the sheer volume of capital needed uh, to, uh, to overcome our current difficulties. They have misjudged it. They've misjudged the mood over public transport because they're evading the responsibilities on it. They're trying to direct public attention to other issues. People are making decisions to locate in Perth or Brisbane or Singapore instead of coming to, to Sydney. I, I, I believe our economy is starting to be affected by the fact we don't have a sexy world standard transport system. Such is the lack of faith in both major parties to tackle the issue 
Chris Stapleton is part of a think tank of planning experts who this month launched its own blueprint to fix Sydney's traffic gridlock. People are crying out, not just the public are crying out for a vision, but I think so are the investors. They're saying, give us something that we can understand, we can aim for, we'll build it. And we're not doing that. But for city commuters, theirs is a modest wish. They just want to get home. Hopefully, <laughs> I'll make it on time tonight. So um, let's hope. I, I, I have no confidence whatsoever on the system. Just hope. Hope springs eternal, they say. Deborah Cornwall with that report. Tasmania's controversy.